and welcome to Forward to the Past. In this episode we are going to be looking at this teasemate. Now people of a certain generation will not know what this is, and people of a certain generation will instantly know what this is. So to give it a bit of insight, I have found a historical film that will give an idea of what life was like before central heating and before teasemates. Oh dear, bit brisk this morning. I fancy a copper before I get out of bed. Here, wife, go make me a cup of tea. What? Go make me a cup of tea now. I ain't making you a cup of tea. Do you go out here and stop the bloody fire? Well, I'm not lighting the fire until you bring me a cup of tea. How do you expect me to make a cup of tea? You would think for you like they're dipped in the bleeding Arctic. I said go make me a cup of tea now. Well, go make me a fire. Go make me a cup of tea. Make me a fire. Make me a cup of tea now. Well, maybe if you brought home a better wage, we could afford a maid to make you a lovely cup of tea. But we can't, can we? Because you're scum! So what you're saying is it's a shame we don't have some kind of device that makes up a cup of tea in the morning without the need to get out of bed. That is exactly what I'm saying. If we had some kind of device, maybe powered by electricity, with a nice clock in the middle, a kettle attachment on the side, maybe on a little tray, That'd be ruddy marvellous! I agree. It's a good idea. Yeah, yeah it is. Good idea. I start eating in the meal! What the? How dare you! Part of the face! I hope you found that video informative. So let's have a look at the teas made itself. So I will move the teacups away because we don't need those yet. We basically have some very minimalist controls. We've got a switch for the light on and off. The switch on this side is to set the alarm. Um, this one on the top is the dial to set when you want the alarm to actually function. So if I were to say, just gone five o'clock, when I engage it on the small hand here, you'll hear a slight click. And that's basically ready. Um, so if I turn it round, we can have a look at what we've got here. So here's the kettle and here's the teapot. This is the power input for the kettle to actually function and we'll sort, we plug that in later on. So basically um, there are these different platforms. So if I take the teapot away there's this little button here that depresses when the teapot's there. And when I take the kettle off you notice that this is on a platform as well and it rocks and clicks like that. So when the kettle actually has water in it, which it currently doesn't, it is heavy enough to push this down and it holds it down and then when it's empty of water it clicks up. So if I put these, I'll demonstrate how this kind of works without plugging this in because otherwise it's going to start heating up the element inside with no water which can damage it but I'll hold this down by hand and if I turn the alarm on the light will go out and if I let this kettle up the alarm will go off and the light will come on and the same goes for if I pick up the teapot so it's these items underneath the little button and the rocker here which is how it knows when the tea is actually made so I'm just going to turn the alarm off so I can lift these up um, and basically we will now we'll have a look on the inside of the teas made to see exactly how that all works we we'll put it all back together we we'll put some water in this and we'll actually try it out Right, I've unplugged the teas made from the wall and I've taken the screws out this panel at the bottom and we're just going to have a little look at the wiring. It's not exactly the most complex of wiring I've ever seen but there's enough wires in there for my liking. So this is the power input cable for, uh, that you plug into the wall and there are basically various things. We've got these two circles here they are the bottom of the light bulbs. We've got the switch here on the side that sets the alarm and the switch here that are for the lights. This one here is the output that goes to the kettle uh, filament inside that heats it up. Um, and we've got, this is the interrupter for the teapot. So when the teapot is down on it, it breaks the connection between the two copper um, strips there. And if you lift it up, it makes a connection. And what that will do is it will divert any power that is going into the kettle and it will divert that power and it will set the buzzer off here, which is the thing that makes that horrible noise. Uh, and the same goes for the plate with the clicking mechanism here. So the idea is if you try and 
set the kettle to boil and either of these things are making a connection, it will set the buzzer off. Uh, so this is a safety thing. So the water cannot be boiled unless both of these connectors have been interrupted. Because uh, basically, for example, if you have not got the teapot on there and you boil the kettle and the water has nowhere to go, it will basically fill this area up with scalding hot water and probably cause an electrical fire. So instead it's just a little safety mechanism so that can't actually happen. Um, it also doubles up as the fact that when the kettle is empty this goes up and it will set the alarm off so it will wake you up and the tea has been made. So I'm going to put this back on and we'll give it a go. Before I put the teas made back together and actually use it we'll just have a look at the kettle and the teapot itself. So the kettle, there's not much to talk about here, but it's worth having a look. There's the power input. The handle is basically out of a material like some kind of plastic, which will not conduct the temperature, so it's safe to pick up. The same goes for the cap here. Now the big difference between this kettle and a typical one you'd find at home is this one actually pressurizes, and that's why the cap here screws down. There's a little pressure relief hole on the top, which is there just so the pressure doesn't build up high enough that the thing can explode. And what I find is if you fill this up too much, when it starts to boil, scalding hot water will spray out of that like a water pistol. So it's always best never to overfill these things. Um, the other thing about this, the reason why it needs to pressurise is it has no ability to pick itself up and pour like a conventional kettle. So the water has to come out of here without the kettle moving. And the way it achieves that is with this spout. So if I take this spout out, you can see it's quite long and it will sit down at the bottom of the kettle and as it starts to boil the pressure will build up and it has nowhere to go so what happens is the water is forced through the bottom of this spout and it travels up and round and it comes out this end and it will go into the teapot and as the water level goes down the kettle will get lighter and eventually it will click open like that on the platform that I described earlier and the alarm will go off and you wake up and you find the water has been boiled and it is currently brewing your tea. We just have a little look inside the kettle. So I use my light here. Um, the element is just at the bottom, typical of what you'd expect in an electric kettle like this. Uh, the other thing about it, it's just got these little lugs on the bottom uh, which locate it on the platform where it's supposed to sit so it can't slide around so it's nice and firm and the teapot itself there's not really much to say about that most tea maids they're ceramic but for some reason this one isn't uh, it's just got a hole in the top where the spout sits so the tea bags inside are ready to receive the hot water now I'm going to set the teas made now so it's all going to go off and function. I can use this dial here which is on the back to actually set the clock itself. So let's pretend it's six o'clock in the morning and I shall now get it ready. So the first thing I can do is I can put the kettle on its platform. It's currently filled with water up to about here. Any higher than that, then it, as I say, it will spurt out that hole. And it's always, you must remember to tighten this down, otherwise it won't be able to pressurize. And the, the kettle will boil indefinitely and could be problematic. So you see the, the rocker is down. If I put it up, well, there we go, it's set. <laughs> and um, basically, if you just want the teas made to be an alarm clock and you don't particularly want to make tea, all you simply do is don't plug it in to the kettle. So when the alarm goes off, it's not trying to boil tea. But because we are going to try, I shall plug it in. The next thing is make sure the teapot is in place. So I can put that on there. It's going to depress the little button, put the spout through the hole like that and that is all ready to go. So I shall turn it round. There are just these, on the tray, there are these little grooves where the rubber feet can sit just so it doesn't roll about. And I shall now set the time for six o'clock and you'll hear it click to confirm that it's actually engaged, like that. Now, when I press this switch down, the lights will go off and it's basically going to start boiling the water. So I shall switch that down now. Now to demonstrate the mechanisms all working, at the moment electricity is going into the kettle and it's going to start boiling it. But if I take this off the rocker, the lights will come on, because the idea is when the tea is made and the alarm goes off, the lights also come on and light up your room. 
So I just tip this off the rocker and it will go off. So that's the kind of end result. But obviously this being filled with water, when I let go, it won't go off until the water has been boiled. So we're going to wait about 10 minutes and this should go off nicely. God, I hate that alarm. So the tea has been made, hence the name Tea's Made. If the noise of the kettle boiling doesn't wake you up, that horrible alarm certainly will. Um, I'm just going to unplug the back of the kettle for safety, and I can take this up here. The tea will be inside and it will be in its brewing stage. I'll just give it a little bit of a stir to give it that kick that is always nice. And I shall pour it into the mugs. Nice tea is made. Now, a lot of people say that the taste of Teas Made tea is always a little bit dusty or stale. And I think one of the reasons is, with the milk, if you don't want to have to go downstairs to your fridge to get the milk, people tended to leave the milk in the mug overnight, which means it goes a bit off. So that's possibly partly to do with why the tea from a Teas Made tastes a little bit funny. Now, you may have noticed that I have made two cups of tea, as the tea's made is designed really for a married couple, um, back in the old days, so really now all I need is just someone to share my cup of tea with. All of a cup of tea, Doc! No, you do not get a cup of tea, get out. I want a cup of tea! Please get out of my way. I want a fancy appliance like this, I want a tea! You may have a cup of tea, but you can't have it here. Get out of my workshop now, please. Not even a woman, you know. I know you're not a woman, it's pretty obvious. I'm having your babies! No, Alright. So, the tea's made. A wonderful, wonderful little machine which, thanks to central heating, is not so necessary nowadays, but it's still a wonderful thing, and I think they look kind of nice. It's a nice kind of ornament you can have in your room, and if you really want, you can even use it to make tea. So, thanks for watching. Wife, make me a cup of tea. What? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't making you a cup of tea until you go start the ruddy fire. Well, I'm not lighting the fire until you bring me a cup of tea. <laughs> Hang on, moustache. Malfunction. That moustache isn't even real. How dare you? Part of the face. <laughs> Oh, that cuss! <laughs>